Here we go. Way back on Thursday, Robbie. Hello. We learned a new way to take the derivative of this. What was it? Do you remember? Good? Yes, but when they're mul things are multiplied together like this, remember what the rule is? I guess we'll call it h prime of x, yeah, in this case, plus. So if you weren't here on Thursday, basically what happens is, is you're going to take the derivative of, it doesn't really matter which one you do because it's added. So take the derivative of this and times it by this, <coughs> and then add it to the derivative of this times that. Okay, that's the basic way it goes. Is this looking familiar from Thursday, I hope? Uh, one thing I should mention with the proofs, um, you might notice I left the first half of my lesson was proofs. What I will do on your test is give you a list of proofs. You have to feed back to me, okay? And I'll give you a list of three proofs. You have to memorize them. One of them I'll make you regurgitate to me. Okay, that's my biology teacher coming out of me, okay? So, so I apologize, Mr. Curry. Um, but um, it's true, right? Isn't that true, biology? Yeah. Sorry, I apologize. Just understanding it. I don't. Yeah, the difference is I never understood <laughs> biology, so I have to just memorize it. And the point is this for the proofs, uh, there'll be three proofs. One of them is the one we did on Monday, on Thursday, the read explain. Um, you can choose either version of it, okay? All right, so, uh, Megan, I'll start with you. Um, what is, I'm gonna leave this as 4x cubed minus 2x plus one. What is the derivative of root of x plus four, please? Like 500x. Uh, close. Yeah, so 1 over 2 root x. Let's do that. Okay, now on, I'm going to do it like this, 1 over 2 root x. Now the reason that happens is that's like x to the 1 half, right? The 1 half comes down and then 1 half changes to negative 1 half. What is this, the derivative of 4? Zero. Zero, okay. So people were trying to tell me, I'm not going to name names, but you know who you are, okay? The derivative of 4 is equal to 1. Okay, so that's why all my notes are mixed up. Okay, no, that's not true. Okay, that's that. Okay, that's the derivative of the first part. Okay, Kayla, you're up. Kayla, Kayla you're up. Um, can you take the derivative, please, of the big first bracket, please, of that big thing? Okay, um, I'm probably going to, it's okay to leave like that, okay? Now, I was, I'm sort of two minds about this. On Thursday's notes, something like this, I probably would want you to, I'll say in the thing, yeah. You boiled that out. I know I did. And the reason I did is because I was hoping things would cancel. That's what I was hoping, right? That's why I always got you to boil these things out. Eventually, what we are looking for when we find the derivative is the roots. Okay, right? So, what you would actually have to do um, with this derivative is boil it all out and solve for x. Right? That's eventually what's going to have to happen. Okay? Um, today, we're not going to do that for the sake of time. Okay, right? But that's generally what you would have to do for this thing. That was, when, that was Thursday's lesson. Okay? One other one I'm going to get you to solve. Okay? Uh, I'll do C. I would like you to find the rate of change. There's not a test that's being changed now, Nestle. So good, Tyler. Do we have to uh, make one of the proofs? Yeah, so I'm going to tell you the three proofs. So you have to, I'll tell you like the week, like on the month. The test will be on Tuesday. On Monday, I'll give you a list of the three proofs you got to know, and you have to, to recite one of them on Tuesday. Okay, this one, 
probably looks familiar. We should cube it. Can we cube it? Yeah. I'll cube it. Okay, this one may look familiar to you now. Wait, it look familiar? It should. This probably is imprinted in your brain forever. Now, you might say, Mr. Sadler, this doesn't look like what we just did. It does look like what we just did. How do you make this question? This isn't with any sort of math, okay? Is you have to turn a question into something you can solve. That we can't solve yet. Sam, you're conveniently up. What do I do to make this look like example B? <coughs> Well, I'm going to start off by expanding here. Okay, that, that just expanded out. The problem is it still doesn't look like the top. And this is where we need the aha moment. Melanie, it can be you, but it can be somebody else too. Yes. What is the aha moment here? This is what this is the thing that you might get on a test. You might say, eh, what do I do? Because you guys, I would expect you guys to be able to do this. How do I make this? Look like this. Yeah, this has three brackets. This is two brackets, right? So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to flow inside of these together. I can put that in the first one. Well, that's going to be chain. You can do chain rule for sec. Chain rule is going to be sec being not today, but sometimes. 8,000, what does that turn into? Minus 104? Is that right? Somebody just confirm that? Right? Yes? And then this is going to be 1 uh, minus, uh, what's 80 squared? 6400? Is that 6400? You know how like old guys have war stories that they tell their grandchildren yes. about? I'm okay that the calculus test of 2014 where I slept. Is that, does, okay now, is that right? Can somebody confirm that for me? Minus 280 minus 280? Yeah, so it would be minus 2, <coughs> be minus 2t over 80, which is t over 4. Oh. Okay, from that, I want you guys to take the derivative and then find f prime of 13, okay? I'm going to hit pause and let you guys do that. Are we okay where that actually came from? Okay, um, Brian, how am I going to do this? So I'm just going to the next line. I'll be doing two pages. F prime of x is equal to what in the first line? What do we have, by the way? Uh, do it. Oh, yeah. I'll do it. Sharon, I think we're at you, actually. I think we are, right? I think we are. Okay, F prime of x. Go ahead. Um, do you want the whole exploit? Yeah, just give me the rough. Take it. Shh, guys. Give me the rough work case. Go ahead. Equals? Um, g of x. No, you don't. The next line. Oh, the next line? Yeah. I see you have your... Can you guys, can you please stop talking? Go ahead. Sorry, where do we stop at? I, just give me this line Sorry, right guys. here. Give me this line right here. Which one? At the very if bottom. If we want to this one, just give me that one. Yeah, give me that one. Right. Oh. Okay, well, let's start. Let's, we'll talk to you then. What's the root of 800 minus 100p? Um, 100. Careful. Negative 100. Negative 100, good. So that's just negative 100 times a second bracket. Which is, I can't remember what it was. Four is it? Um, one one minus. T over 40. Um, T over 6400. T squared over 6400. Okay, good. And then I'm going to the next line. Plus, um, what was it? One minus, no, 8,000. 8,000 minus 30. Okay, now the reason she okay guys, can you, can um, you, can you please go here guys? Okay. The reason it goes to that right, because like the 2 comes down and times by 2, so it's 2t two over 6400. Oh. Okay, that's our prime of x. Now, the question was, do I need to foil this or I'm going to say no? Oh. If you foil it out, that's fine. Please let it hit the ground as little as possible. Impossible, please. Feel the 
car wreck, right? And why are you going to hit it? How'd the Ulster game go, by the way? His reaction was one with a buzzer. I read that in the newspaper. I was in the hospital. I was watching, this is what I got, Rogers Cable TV. So I saw the junior game. I saw the first half of the junior game. And then they let me out of the hospital so I didn't watch the senior. Yeah, they uh, all back and then made sure he had a buzzer for your win. Okay, um, so you could foil this out. Why do I not need to foil this out, though? Yeah. That's all you need to do. If I just do F5 of 13, and you can just type it on your calc if you really want to, what does that actually equal all the way through? I'm getting an answer. I don't like what they would you get for an answer. If you pull it out, that's fine. You'll get the same answer. Okay? If you uh, it depends on what the question is, right? If you, if you're solving, if I said, um, find, find the time that the change is negative 300, and that means you'd be solving for t, so you'd have to put it. Oh. That'd be awesome. I love it. Oh. You'd have to, it's just a quadratic, right? It's a messy quadratic, it's just quadratic, though. So you'd have to put it. But for this one here, you're just going to get the number, you know what I mean? Like, so you don't, you don't need to. When would you have to foil it? The only time, okay, guys can I talk here, please? The only time you need to foil it out is when you're solving for t or solving for x. Right? That would be the only time you need to. Right? But beyond that, you don't really need to. Is that for us? No, that was my three times. <laughs> they um, I'm strong. I hit pause just so you don't hear what I'm saying.